Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for September 18th, 2023. Glad that you are with me. Today is National Cheeseburger Day, National Day of Civic Hacking, National First Love Day, Chiropractic Founders Day, my dad will be happy about that, Ganesh Katurthi, and Gedalia Fast. God, Godalaya fast. Let's go ahead and get started. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others. Come, Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing in our lives this day. Amen. Our reading for today is Exodus chapter 24, starting with verse 1. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Then God said to Moses, Come up to Adonai, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship at a distance. Moses alone shall come near Adonai, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of Adonai and all the ordinances. And the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that Adonai has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of Adonai. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen as offerings of well-being to Adonai. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that Adonai has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that Adonai has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, God has now, we have the beginning of the law. So just a reminder of sort of the larger context. The people have now been freed from enslavement to Egypt. They wandered through the wilderness for a little bit. In the wilderness of sign, God has provided for them manna and water and meat they finally come to the, uh, the mountain of God, Sinai. And God says, okay, I'm going to concert. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do, or I'm going to, I'm going to let you know what you need to do. Right. Cause I want you to be a, a priestly nation, a holy people. You're going to be sort of the ones who mediate on my behalf before all of humanity, making manifest sort of the, the promise that God made to Abraham that all the world would be blessed through him and his descendants. Okay. There was three days of consecration, and then God comes down upon the mountain, and there's thunder and lightning, very, very frightening. And God speaks to the Ten Commandments. And the people flip out because it's really scary. So they send Moses, I think Aaron, and they go up on the mountain and they have now heard the rest of this law, things about how to be just, how to be righteous. Um, We have heard about 
people who were enslaved. We've heard about um, taking someone's stuff, uh, whether that stuff might be their animal or it might be their daughter or whatever it is. How do you make restitution? All of these sorts of things, right? Now there's going to be a formal agreement. So Moses writes down all of this stuff, all of this sort of beginning law. It says, these are the things that we're supposed to do. He's there with a, a couple of, of others, it seems. Comes down to the people and says, all right, everybody, here's, here's the way we're going to do this and reads the, the law, the Ten Commandments, and the, the several laws that we have read over the last week or so, maybe two weeks, and sets up an altar and makes a sacrifice. There's There are 12 sort of pillars, and these are for the 12 tribes. People are making sacrifices, blood sacrifices of animals. Half of the blood is going on this altar because it is marked specifically for this purpose, to make sacrifices to Adonai, to God. And then the rest of the blood he takes and he sprinkles on the people, which seems really weird and gross to us. But it's not an uncommon sort of idea, image, practice of the ancient world where where blood was to be a sign of a covenant, a sacred promise made between two people. Maybe you remember in the book of Genesis when God makes covenant sort of at or with Abraham and they take animals and they cut them in half and they sort of separate the two halves of these flayed bodies, right? And then the idea is that they walk in between those two halves as a way of saying, I promise to be faithful to this covenant or else it'll be with me as it is with these animals. In that covenant, God alone went through the um, between the animals while Abraham had a quick nap. But here God is saying, okay, you're going to be a part of this thing. Here are the things that I need you to do. You need to act in these ways. And the people multiple times says, say, we will do this. We will be faithful to this covenant. We will be obedient to the things that God has told us. That's the way it's going to be, right? And so they make this covenant. The blood is a sign of that covenant. Just like a marriage ring, a wedding ring, is a sign of the covenant of marriage. This blood is the sign of that covenant, that they are this people. They are God's people. They are consecrated. They are covenantal people. Jewish theology says that every Jewish soul is at that moment in time. And so someone born in, you know, the year one or before that, or in the year 6,000 and whatever it is we are now, their soul was present at this moment and made covenant with the living God. And so the re reciting of this covenant is a reminder of the covenant that we have participated in. In the same way we do uh, a remembrance of baptism. I believe we've got one on, we did one yesterday. And in that way, we all remember this common identity that we have. That wherever and whenever we were baptized, we all share in this identity as this people of God. That imagery is is borrowed, is taken, it is... Uh, a continuation of this covenant, blood covenant sort of idea. There's a sacred promise that is made be between God and humanity in this particular chosen people, chosen to be the, the priests, the mediators between God and all of humanity. 
They're willing participants. They say, this is something that we will do. Um, and that's going to be important because there are ways that God deals with this people that are different, both positively and negatively, because of this covenant, because of this sacred promise between these people and their God. Our baptismal identity makes us different, not in the ways where we're better or, or sort of the negative ways that different works, but that we have a sacred identity. There is something that we share with one another, and it tells us something about who we are and whose we are that we have been cleansed of our sin. And we are to share the good news that Jesus, in Jesus, the, the righteousness of God has been revealed. To go and mediate between God and all of humanity. Our commitment is Yes, we will do this thing. We will be faithful. Sometimes we're not. But we can always go back to this identity. We can always go back to the covenant. That God has marked us as God's very own. We are children of God. What does this identity mean to you? What does it mean to you that you have been baptized? What does it mean um, for these people to be the, the chosen covenanted people marked by blood? How do you live out your covenantal identity? How do you not? Take some time to meditate, to pray, to journal about these things. And when you're ready, we'll join our hearts together in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, help us to recognize you when our neighbors say, I am present. Give us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and strength to serve you this day and always. Amen. We pray this day for the needs of our congregation and community. We pray for Linda Lapie, who was moved to Oshner Rehab Center, for Viola um, and her friend Cordelia. She asked for an online request for physical and emotional health. Pray for Jennifer, a friend of Ashley's, on a mission trip to Honduras. For Donna, a friend of Ashley's with stage 4 breast cancer. For Scotty, my niece. For Pastor Chaz from New Beginnings Ministry with some health concerns. For Wayne T., who's having a skin cancer removed. We continue to pray for Tom, childhood friend of Bill's, Ashley, Hank and Charlotte, Sandy's sister-in-law, the family and friends of George, a friend of Sandy's, for the Mayfields, and for Laura, the sister of Cameron and for all those who are on our hearts and minds. We pray that you would help us to build congregational vitality.
Dismantle Structural Racism. Eradicate Systemic Poverty. Lord Jesus Christ, we remember our neighbors and we ask ourselves, when did I recognize you? Bless what we have done. Forgive what we have failed to do and make us ready to meet you when you come in glory. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. God is with us in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button. Go to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA. Our reading came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible with my own little tweets. You can watch this daily prayer on YouTube. You can listen to it on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. And you can um, uh, yeah, get a daily email from Substack, uh, just go ahead and sign up there and that'll just send you the audio and the video version. Thanks for joining me. Have a blessed day. And we'll see you next time.